Hi everybody, this is Stephen Roselle, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to review some of the latest deformation updates uh, or improvements to the latest version of Maya, which is Maya 2017 Update 3. So we're going to talk about some cool new things that you can do with deformation along with skinning. Uh, and what you'll see here is a character from a project uh, that we're working on internally called Dreadnought. So you'll be seeing more of this over the coming weeks and months. Uh, but what you can see here is this character, certain body parts have been skinned, others have not. So what I'm gonna do is go in and talk about a little bit about some skinning techniques that we can use. So for starters, if we go to the standard bind skin options and reset and just do a default skin, what you will notice is that you don't get very good results. So if I were to go in here and actually bend the leg, you can see that the left leg starts to affect the right leg. And then if I bend this knee, you can see it actually is affecting the calf of the other leg. That doesn't really work very well, uh, but that's legacy skinning. It's been around for a while. So one thing that we added fairly recently was a new skinning mode called geodesic voxel, which actually does a pretty good job and it will eliminate some of those problems. Now you can take this as a starting point and it'll get you a lot farther along the path. And you can see it actually does a pretty good job of separating out the body parts left leg from right, but it doesn't deal with everything perfectly. It say maybe gets you, you know, 70 to 80% of the way there potentially. Uh, I might want to take this a step further using a new technique. So what we're going to do is use uh, something called Delta Mush, and we're going to combine that with skinning in order to create a kind of a better starting point. And then we're going to bake that back down into standard skinning. So for starters, what we'll do is we'll create a skin. And this time, I'm going to basically reset everything. I'm going to lower the maximum influences down to one. So I get only one joint per vertex. And then I'm going to turn off my maintain max influences because I want to expand that out later. So now I do a bind. And what you'll notice initially is that I get pretty ugly results. So I get a lot of shearing, a lot of tearing. Um, and you can really see it here in the shoulder area where it just doesn't really look very good and understandably so because I've really limited the, the way that my skinning is working. But I did that for a reason because now what I wanna use is the Delta Mush Deformer to go in and add a layer of smoothness on top of this. So once again, I'll undo this and I'll grab my main body. I'll go into the deformation menu and I'll apply Delta Mush. And what you will notice now is that I get kind of the secondary smoothing on top of the base skinning, which actually gives me a pretty nice looking result. If I start to take a look in these different areas and maybe let's do the clavicle as well, you can see here that I'm getting pretty nice looking skinning now uh, based on this kind of layered Delta Mush effect. Now I can smooth that out a little bit more. I can bump up the iterations for instance, and I can expand the smoothing step to max that out and even get a better result. And you can compare and contrast by turning off the envelope value, turning that to zero. That's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like with the smoothing. So in a couple of simple steps, I was able to get some pretty awesome looking kind of default skinning. Uh, the problem is that this is actually based on some deformation in addition to the standard base skin. Now, if I'm working in a real-time environment, if I'm working in VR, if I'm working in video games, this is not an option because I can't run this, this Delta Mush Deformer in real time. Uh, it is now multi-threaded um, in Maya 2017 Update 3. So actually in the Maya viewport, uh, it will run with GPU acceleration, rather not multi-threading. It will run with GPU acceleration in conjunction with parallel evaluation. But still, you're most likely not going to be running this uh, in real time. So what you can do is you can take all the same results. And actually, I accidentally undid that. Let's bump this back up to 1. And let's bump this back up to 20. You can take all these same results, and you can essentially bake them into a skin. So I'm going to move this character over here, and I'm going to bring up uh, an alternative version of the character, which is the green guy here. And what you can see here is that right now, this guy actually has no skinning set up. So I'm actually going to transfer all that cool skinning with the comp delta mush into standard skin weights. And I'm going to use a new tool in Maya 2017 update three, which is called the Bake Deformer tool. Now, unfortunately, this is not built into the UI yet. Uh, there are reasons for that I won't get into, but right now this is accessible through the command line. So if you use this 
command, bake deformer tool, and you just simply paste that into the command prompt like so, you will get a window that allows you to bake the deformation from one character mesh to another character mesh and one skeleton to another skeleton. So this is already loaded, but but what I would do is basically just drag and drop these into place. So I'll just start from scratch here. Let's just reset everything. Uh, there we go. And I'll take this mesh, which is right here. I'll middle mouse drag that as my source. I'll take the, the source skeleton, which is right here. I'll middle mouse drag that there. I'll take this mesh, which is my target. I'll middle mouse drag this here. And I'm doing the middle mouse drag simply because I have had better results. The auto load sometimes doesn't quite catch the right shape node, which uh, can be annoying. So I prefer to drag and drop. And then I'll bump up my number of influences uh, to kind of improve the skinning. We'll bump that up to maybe five. And now I'll simply apply. And what you'll see is it will take my source character and go through joint by joint, rotating them along different axes, a given number of degrees. And then it does what's called a skinning decomposition. And under the hood, it's converting this kind of layered delta mush skin uh, on top of the skin into standard skin weights and then applying them to my green character. Now, once that's done, we'll give it a, a chance to bake. Once that's done, I can minimize the window. And now I can go in and start to compare these and I can actually see the results. So the character on the right is purely skinning. There is no delta mush at all. The character on the left, our left, has the delta mush, but you can see the results are actually uh, fairly similar. They're not gonna be 100% exact, but they are gonna be pretty pretty close. So let's go in and just do a couple more uh, comparisons. You can kind of see the hips there and how they kind of uh, stretch and compress from one side to the other. Uh, you can go in and start to compare the knees and you can start to see that the knees give you pretty good results here as well, uh, all based on that uh, skinning transfer. Now, just as a reminder, this is what it looked like without the Delta Mush with the simple skin weights, not very good. This is what it looks like with the skin weights, or rather the Delta Mush. And then the character on the right is simply a skin. There's just standard skin weighting. There is no Delta Mush, so this will perform in real time very well. And it may not be 100% uh, finished, you may need to still refine this. So you might want to go in and do a little weight painting to kind of uh, fix certain little problems, but this will get you pretty far down the path of a, a really nice looking skin for certain types of characters.